the scriptures, she ruled, she ruled sisters, princess warriors of the most high. I'll praise to the Most High for another day. I'll praise to the Most High for allowing me to come and make this video for sisters. And Lord willing, sisters can use this video for exhortation through the Spirit. Um, no matter what season that we're in. Um, yesterday, I started reading um, 1 Samuel. And... So, last night, I started reading 1 Samuel again. And... You know, the, I don't want to say the story, the, um, the account of Sister Hannah, um, Sister Penn and I, and their husband, Elk and I, um, really just, you know, it just really allowed me to think about a few things that I had on, go had going on myself, um, and just how the Lord blessed Hannah through this situation, um, cause she went through a lot. Um, and it might not be heavy for some people, but for this sister, I know, or for any sister, I know that we wanna be fruitful and multiply. We wanna, you know, bear children. And this was something that the sister Hannah was going through that she wasn't able to, um, she wasn't able to do at that at the present time and it vexed her sorely and you know she prayed to the lord she prayed to the most high and um you know even the priest uh let me see i think it was eli he thought he thought she was crazy he thought she was drunk but you know that's how sorely vexed she was that you know she was just she was praying to the lord just praying you know, her lips was moving, wasn't no words coming out, but, you know, the Lord heard her prayer and decided to bless her and bring her out of that circumstances, bringing her spirit from low, um, you know, to to raise it up and to be high and to be thankful, giving him all glory, honor, and praises, you know, because even her husband was asking her, like, you know, what's wrong with you? Why are you not eating? Why are you not drinking? You know, like, what is going on? Um, and she just had a spirit on her that, you know, was making her sad, you know, making her feel down through the spirit. Um, but the Lord, all praise to the Most High, brought her out of that, and she was able to conceive and have a mighty son, which is Samuel. So, um... I wanted to read a little bit of the account and um you know if y'all have time to also y'all can read first samuel um chapters one and two i mean the whole book is good but this is more so speaking on chapter one and chapter two um let me see mm, i guess i'll start at Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1 and 5 it says but unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion for he loved Hannah but the Lord had shut her womb and her adversary also pervert, provoked her sore for to make her fret because the Lord had shut her womb um, I'm going to jump down to um, actually I'm going to keep reading it said verse 7 and as he did so year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord so she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli, the priest, sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. So the sister she was real vexed and due to spirit she was sad and so you know um, wasn't eating, wasn't drinking like I said before and you know her husband's like what, what, what's going on you know um, and so she prayed unto the Lord and she wept um, but 
uh, Lord willing, y'all can read the rest of the chapter. But um, I'm going to skip over to um, verse, I mean, chapter 2. Um, and this is when Hannah is praying to the Lord because, you know, like I said, the Lord heard her prayers and blessed her and allowed her to conceive to have Samuel. Um, but this is, you know, what really made me, um, so like, yeah, this is what really made me be like, you know what, I need to, you know, have that same sentiment in my mind, you know, when I feel like I'm going through something heavy or I'm, you know, being vexed with a spirit or I'm feeling real low through the spirit. Um, this is chapter two, verse six, it says, the Lord killeth and the Lord maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. So it's just like the Lord can take you out of any circumstances that you're going through. And it's so many accounts, so many mighty accounts of our foremothers and forefathers just being in, um, you know, a low, a low um, estate and the most high deliver them out of that or, you know, in a predicament where the enemy is, you know, vexing them or at them sorely. And, you know, the most high just deliver us from that. Um, you know, sometimes in different accounts, uh, you know, sisters are just praying. Some accounts, um, our foremothers and forefathers are praying and fasting together. Um, but these are the, the tactics that we need to adopt in order to endure through whatever that we're going through. Um, and I just have wrote a couple notes. And because, you know, I wrote this for notes for myself. But like I said, I just, I always feel that. You know, I'm not the only sister that might be going through this, so Lord willing, y'all can use it for exhortation too. Um, I just wrote, you know, don't fret. Don't become weak in mind or faith. Don't become faint-hearted. I must trust in the Most High and His will for me, knowing that, you know, like all these things work together for our good, you know, uh, which is Romans chapter 8 and 28, you know. Um, and then I had a few precepts that, um, you know, just kind of backing up what I'm saying because, you know, I want to speak my own being opinion. I want, you know, the word to be my comfort, to be my counselor and, you know, to help me endure through these times. So I have Jeremiah chapter 32 and um, I have two precepts in that chapter. First, I have um, verse 17 and then I have um, verse 27. So, um, so lucky, y'all. I had went to Isaiah 32. Let's see, in verse 17. Okay, Karn. It says, I, Lord God, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven. Did I go to the right one? Oh, con, I did. Okay, so lucky, y'all. It says, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out thy arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Um, and then, like I said, I had verse 27 in the same chapter. It says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? So, you know, the Lord is basically asking um, Jeremiah, like, is it, he's the Lord of Lord, the King of Kings, you know, what is too hard for him to do? Nothing is the answer. It's really like, you know, a rhetorical question. And, you know, like for us, you know, we got to ask the same thing. What's too hard for the Lord? And of course, we're going to say nothing's too hard for the Lord. You know, if it be of his will that he bless us and allow us to be able to come out of whatever circumstances is holding us back from, you know, continuing to be strong um, in our faith or strong in the situation or circumstances that we're going through, um, you know, um, you know, if it be of his will. And we should only want what his will is for us. You know, we got to go through certain things in order to um, basically 
get to where we're going if we don't go through nothing how are we supposed to learn if we don't go through anything how are we supposed to be strengthened through the spirit if we don't go through anything how are we supposed to exhort one another you know and be like you know sis i've been through the same thing so i know the lord can bring you from this or that how can you be able to relate to your sister or your neighbor or you know it's many accounts of our foremothers and forefathers um i had psalm 37 and 5 it says commit thy ways unto the lord trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass so when you commit your ways unto the lord you know um and continuously having him upon your mind um knowing that his will is perfect and better than anything that you could ever think of um it really it, it helps it helps us guard the loins of our mind that we can continue on and fight the good fight um and then i have um proverbs 16 and 3 oh i'm flipping past it <laughs> It says, commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. So, you know, and all of this is like girding up the loins of your mind and understanding that it's nothing too hard for the Lord. I know I'm, I, I probably am going to keep saying this throughout the whole video, but it's okay. It's okay. Because that's the point of this video to kind of drill it in our mind. It's nothing too hard for the Lord. <laughs> it's nothing too hard for the Lord. So for me, like I said, it's so many beautiful accounts of our foremothers and forefathers. Um, I just wrote, you know, look at the generations of old and how the Lord made a way for them. You know, just like this um, account of, of Hannah, the Lord made a way for that sister. The Lord made a way. Um, and Hebrews 11 is a beautiful account. It's so many um different accounts in hebrews chapter 11 so i do recommend that sisters you can read that um and also y'all don't laugh at my pocket for a but i'm about to go open oh, real quick gotta pull out the, the new and improved one but this is it's my favorite one because this got all my highlights in there i guess i gotta transfer my highlights over but um, so I read two and um, I'm actually start at two. It says, set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity believe in him and he will order believe in him and he will help thee order thy way aright trust in him and um then i'm gonna skip to verse 10 it says look at the generations of all and see did ever any trust in the lord and was confounded or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken or whom did he ever despise that called upon him for the lord is full of compassion and mercy long-suffering and very pitiful and forgive sins and save it in time of affliction woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that go of two ways woe unto him that is faint-hearted for he believeth not therefore he shall not be defended so it's just like we do want the Lord to be there for us. We do want the Lord to, you know, be our defense. So we have to have faith and we have to continue, you know, pressing to more towards the mark. And we can't think these things strange. We can't, um, you know, think that it's strange that we're going through these things. I didn't drop my pen. It's okay. <laughs> Um, and we just have to understand that these things that we're going through are the condition of the battle. Um, I'm going to pull that precept up real quick. Okay, con. 
um this is first peter chapter 4 and 12 it says beloved thinking not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you it says but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Hamashiach Yahweh's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with this exceeding joy. So, you know, don't think it's strange that we're going through these things. And, you know, the Lord, these, stuff, these spirits are subject unto the Lord. So, you know, don't worry too. Don't worry. You got to you know just basically pray to the lord and pray that his will be done and trust in him that in due season and due time um that whatever that you're going through that the lord may give you increase or the lord may bring you out of whatever that you're going through um i wanted to bring out second Ezra chapter 14 and verse 14 It says, 2nd Ezra chapter 14 and 14, it says, Let go from thee mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of man, put off the weak nature. Um, verse 15, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee, and haste to flee from these times. So it's just like, you know, it's more stuff to come ahead. It's heavier things. And then, you know, you also got to think, you know, like, all praises and most high could things could be worse you know but you know it's nothing too hard for the lord to bring you from low to high or to bring you out of whatever that you're going through so you know lord willing sisters can use these precepts and you know really meditate upon them um because when we worry we don't add anything unto us um that remind me of matthew chapter 6 I think it's six, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, so this is Matthew chapter six and 27. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or where with all shall we be clothed? clothed Salakia, for after all these things do the gentiles seek for your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you that take therefore no thought for the morrow for the morrow take shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof so it's just like you know we want to focus on those things that are well pleasing unto the most high so that he can establish our path establish our way and you know sisters um we got to gird up the lords of our minds so that we can you know continue to endure and continue to keep it in our mind it's nothing too hard for the lord it's nothing too hard for the lord and we got to be thankful and be grateful that we do have these beautiful precepts in our um, Bible and our proper, um to help us remember that and understand. And just look at um, the generations of old and how the Most High helped them out. Uh, Lord willing, this was helpful for sisters and give sisters um you know a push through the spirit to keep enduring and knowing that you know the season that you're in it's only going to last for a moment um but you know enjoy will come um, lord willing 
Um, I pray that sisters continue to endure, pray, fast, and remember once again that it's nothing too hard for the Lord. Um, if y'all need anything, um, you know, prayer requests, anything, um, my Instagram is, I think it's the same as this page. If not, I'll just leave it in the description. But, um, I'll praise to the most high once again for these beautiful precepts. Shalom. Love y'all.